Next, we're going to go through the brush selector, and I'll show you the different characteristics of each type of brush. So let's start in acrylics and oils. This is going to do a good job of simulating oils and acrylics. Let's try broad cover brush. We can paint with this. We can use light pressure to get more of that paper green or heavier pressure to kind of cover it up. We can select another color here. We can kind of mix them together. Now this is kind of a drier brush, so it doesn't blend. Let's try another option here. Let's try clumpy brush. Now this is kind of an oilier type of brush that has paint that eventually runs out. And then if you keep painting with it, you're essentially going to be blending. So I haven't lifted my pen up. And I can paint really anywhere, even over on this stuff. And I can blend this as well. So it's kind of a blender and a brush that adds paint at the same time. If you see a green property, that means that the brush can probably use green in one way or another. So just kind of look up here at the top to see what the brushes can do. Let's try dry bristle. Similar kind of brush where it runs out of paint and blends a little bit. If we do marks next to each other, dry bristle and clumpy bristle just have different bristles in the marks. Here's fine camel. This has a different kind of bristling to it and it doesn't run out of paint. We have glazing round. This is also kind of similar to the camel hair style brush where you have these bristles that look like this. We have opaque acrylic. Yet another kind of bristly brush. These tend to be more opaque and don't really blend as much. You can try Real Oils Filbert. This is a real oil style brush, so you get bristles that look a little bit more realistic and are more dynamic. So you're going to do a stroke and the paint will kind of eventually run out. It also kind of smudges and blends as you're painting. If your pen supports pen tilt, you can keep your pen upright to get a wider mark, or you can angle it to get a thinner mark, and you can get everything in between. So it just makes your mark a little bit more dynamic. Here's real wet brush. If it says real, then it's that same kind of real bristle technology. This gives me kind of a nice wet look. So I can blend in some other colors to that. I can use lighter pressure just to kind of mix it together. If you zoom in, it has kind of a wet look to it. Here's tapered camel. Wet oily brush. So you can see there's a lot of similarities in these variants. They do slightly different things, but they all share some characteristics of being kind of either wet and oily or dry and opaque. Here's wet soft acrylic. This one kind of blends and smudges a little bit as you're painting. So if I take some aqua color and blend it into that, I can get these really nice mixes of color. So that's the acrylics and oils category. Let's move on to airbrushes. We looked at airbrushes a bit earlier. You can change the angle of the airbrush using pen tilt to spray out little particles like this. If I use lighter pressure, I get a thinner spray, or if I use heavier pressure, I get a thicker spray. Here's digital hard edge. This is a different kind of airbrush where it's just kind of a soft edge brush that builds up to opaque. Here's digital soft pressure. I like this one a lot because you can get these really nice gradients just by building them up and changing your pen pressure. Digital soft velocity means that the faster you move the brush, the more the brush size is going to change. So if I move it really slowly versus really fast, then I get that tapering effect. Fine spray is yet another spray brush. Soft airbrush is just another soft airbrush. This works really well if you use a large airbrush. Here's variable splatter. Again, another splatter brush. You could use this for creating little speckles and things like that. Let's move on to the artist category. These are brushes that simulate popular artist styles. So for example, we have Impressionist Blender. We can use that just to kind of blend in an Impressionist style. So it makes individual brush strokes really easily. Here's Sargent Brush. Sargent Brush gives you a nice liquidy, oily effect. You can blend other colors into that nicely. We also have some control over the grain as well. If I paint with this brush, you can see it has a little bit of variability to it. Whereas if I put the grain at 100%, it doesn't have as much. And the last brush is Van Gogh. And that gives us a mark that has multiple colors within it. So I can get some really nice Van Gogh effects here. The next category is photo painting brushes. We're gonna look at photo painting or cloning a little bit later, so we'll skip over those. The next category is blenders. Let's just put down some paint here with our Van Gogh brush, and then we can look at how the blenders work. 
the blenders aren't going to add paint, they're only going to mix or blend paint. Of course, oily blender is the first one. Now this one's using a lot of paper grain. It's a very smudgy, liquidy brush. So we can change our paper grain to something else. Let's say thick, scratchy. And if I blend, then I get kind of a different pattern. I could set the grain lower. I can get more of that grain strength because again, this works kind of in reverse. So if I want a lot of that grain, I can get it that way as well. So blending can mix colors together. It can smudge colors around and push them. It can add texture. It can really do a lot of things. Let's try another blender. Here's coarse smear blender jitter. This gives me a more smeary effect. Here's diffuser one. I really like these diffuser brushes because they give me this nice soft blending look like you get with traditional paint. And you can control the strength of that using the opacity. So if you only want it to blend a little bit, set the opacity lower. If you want it to be a really strong blender, set the opacity higher. And depending on how hard you press, you're going to blend it more or less too. If I press down really hard, I break it up a lot. If I press down lightly, I can very softly blur that up without breaking it up and diffusing it too much. So that's a good way to kind of soften out transitions. The next brush is diffuser two. Also a diffuser brush, but it gives me kind of a more oily look. Here's directional diffuser. I can kind of pull in a certain direction so I can get these kind of parallel strokes as I'm blending. Flat grainy stump. This is kind of a stump blender. Again, if I change my paper to something more like a pastel, it might make more sense. Here's just add water. This gives me kind of a wet effect. So if I want the edges to look like they're kind of fading out into water or flowing or something, I can do that. This works well for working with watercolor. Here's palette knife, and we get kind of a palette knife effect when we're blending. The particle spring loaded knife gives us a nice particle effect. The particles move and dance around on their own. We'll be looking at these in more detail a little bit later. There's also Particle Spring Soft Blender. Gives us yet another kind of blending. Now the variety of blenders is one of the things I really love about Corel Painter. You can get so many different looks when you're blending. Many art applications only have a couple of different blenders and it, there's more to blending than just mixing and smudging color. Let's try Pointed Stump. Again, that's another kind of flat textured brush. We have a wet oily blender. As you can imagine, that's kind of wet and oily. It starts out adding a little bit of paint, but then it mostly blends. So I won't go through all of these brushes, but that gives you a pretty good idea of what the blenders can do. Here's chalk pastels and crayons. We'll start with basic crayons. This gives you kind of a waxy look. It's important to note that if you create a separate layer and you draw on that layer with the crayon, it's going to look kind of more like a marker. It's not going to cover it very opaquely. That's because it's set the composite method to gel. We'll come back to composite methods in a bit, but that's just something to keep in mind. It might not always look exactly the way you think it should. Here's blunt chalk. Now what these brushes are gonna have in common is they all are pretty hard and pretty flat, but they use a lot of your paper grain. If I press lightly with this, I get more paper texture. If I press heavier, then I get less. And again, I can change my paper grain to anything else if I like to change the kind of texture that I get. So I won't go through all of these chalk brushes. I think you get a pretty good idea of what they can do. Let's move on to dab stencils. Let's start with flow map chalk. I'm gonna set my paper grain back to basic. We're using the dab stencil called flow map textures. I'll go ahead and draw a mark with this. Now you can see I'm getting the texture from the paper grain and from the dab stencil. So this dab stencil is stenciling off the dab. It's concealing a little bit of the dab to give it more texture. If I set the dab stencil to fine dots, then I get a different pattern. And I can combine dab stencil and paper grain together so I can get fine dots plus canvas. Or I can do fine dots plus pebble board. Or I can do pebble board plus a dab stencil of horizontal flow. So there's a lot of different looks I can get working between dab stencils and paper grain. So what all these brushes are gonna have in common is that they can use the dab stencils but these are brushes from different categories. Some might be particle brushes, some might be airbrushes, some might be blenders, some might be bristle brushes like this one. So definitely go through here and experiment with these. The next category is digital watercolor. 
We'll start with broad water brush. And digital water is kind of one of the older watercolor technologies in Corel Painter. Typically with watercolor, you'll want to choose a color that's a bit lighter because it's a watercolor, it's going to build up more opaquely and more intensely. Digital watercolor gives you this nice diffusion along the edges. And if I wanted to, I could blend in other colors to that and they'll kind of mix together and diffuse. Now diffusion means that the paint is going to kind of trickle and flow and then eventually dry and settle. If you want to go ahead and dry it immediately, you can click on the dry button and that freezes it in place. You also have some control over your digital watercolor. You can set your diffusion. So a higher diffusion creates brush strokes with soft edges. So if I turn this up and I paint a stroke, it's going to diffuse for longer and the edges are going to soften out more. And again, I could paint like this and then quickly dry it before that diffusion occurs all the way. Another property we have control over is the wet fringe. That sets the amount of water and paint available for diffusion at the edges of the brush stroke. So I'll put the wet fringe down to zero and paint a mark. Now we don't get any fringe. If we set the fringe to 100% and we paint a mark, then we're getting a lot of fringe, but the fringe doesn't really show very well because we're diffusing too much. So let's turn the diffusion off. And now we'll make a mark and we keep more of that fringe along the edge. We also have access to dry the digital watercolor here, but that's just one extra click. You could get to it faster here. And then the tips say use the gel composite method for the most authentic watercolor look and feel. You can access this method from the layers panel window layers. So what that means is that if you're painting and you want to create layers, I'll create a new layer here. I'll make sure to set the composite method to gel. And now as I'm mixing these layers together, they're going to blend in a more natural way. If I set the composite method to normal, it covers it up. That's not the look we want. In addition to gel, you could also try multiply, which also blends it together. Let's try another variant here. Let's try coarse water. This is a watercolor brush that uses the green, and that green might be a bit more noticeable. Now, if we do a stroke with this brush, you can see that it uses your paper green. So if green is higher, you'll see more of the green in the paper texture. If it's set lower in this case, then you'll see a bit less of it. You still see a lot of it along the edges, but within the stroke itself, you have control over the appearance. Let's try diffuse water. We get something that looks like that. And here's dry brush. If you wanted kind of more of a dry effect, this almost kind of eats away at the paint and picks some of it up off the canvas. You could just use this like an eraser too, if you wanted to erase. There's gentle wet eraser if you wanted an actual eraser for the watercolor. And there's other effects like salt where you can sprinkle salt on your watercolor and wash brushes and so on. So feel free to experiment with these to see the different effects you can get. Moving on to dynamic speckles. Dynamic speckles are kind of like particle brushes. They have little speckles that can move around in different ways. So here's flow jet. We can change the angle of our brush to change the angle of the flow, just like we can with an airbrush. But you can see these particles kind of spray out and are a little bit more dynamic than bristles are. You can change the size of these speckles and make them smaller, or you can make them larger. Let's change flow jet to flow spray blender. This has particles that kind of spray out and blend a little bit. So it does add paint, but it also blends. Let's try hard bristle. This is a more bristly style brush. If you use light pressure, then you'll see those bristles are smaller. If you use heavier pressure, then they get much larger. And you can kind of blend and paint. So out of all the different types of bristle brushes in Corel Painter, the dynamic speckles are the more organic looking bristles. And you can do a lot more with them. Again, if you wanted the speckle size to be thinner, then you could get thinner bristles on your brush. Let's change to soft bristle. We get basically the same brush, just with softer bristles. Here's particle bristle. So you get bristles that are a bit bigger and a little bit more unruly. And you can feel free to try out the other speckle brushes as well. Next, we have the FX brushes. This can give you various effects. Let's try color hose jitter. And this is a special type of brush called an image hose. And when I paint with it, it's going to spray out images or a series of images. So I get these different leaves. I can change the size of the leaves with the size of my brush, so I can get bigger or smaller leaves. And I can change the stamp or what's coming out of the brush. I could choose these palm trees, 
Now I could change the angle of the palm trees with the angle of my pen as well. You could even get different textures and things. Another thing you can do with these Imachose brushes is you can change the color of the brush. To do that, you'll be selecting your additional color and click on that. Choose another color here. And now this particular brush is gonna jitter between the original color and the color you've chosen. We can control that using the green slider. So if I want less of the original color, I can set green lower. If I want more of it, I can set green higher. If you don't like that jitter effect, you can also choose linear size P, which is also an image hose brush, but now you're not gonna be able to change the color of that brush. You can also change your main and additional color here in the color picker under swap colors. You can use the keyboard of shift X to do that as well. That'll toggle it both here and over here. Now, if you're using this feature, keep in mind that most brushes are using your main color. And if you happen to click on your additional color, you're going to be stuck on that color. And let's say we go back to a regular brush like acrylics and oils. This brush uses the main color. So if I want to be choosing the main color, I'm still getting orange and I'm stuck. I'm not able to change my color. Why is that? That's because I need to click on the main color so that I'm choosing the main color. Let's move on to the next brush, which is Distorto. Now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just draw a rectangular selection and I'm going to fill that, deselect it with control D. I'll go to that Distorto brush and Distorto will let you pull and push so you can reshape your objects. So you could use this to create feathers or grass blades or spikes or wings or whatever. Let's change it to fairy dust. Fairy dust will give you a nice fairy dust effect. Let's gel fractal jitter. It gives you a nice gel effect. It's kind of transparent, but it also has a lot of paper texture in it. So we could change that texture to something else and change the way that the brush looks. If it says jitter, that means the mark is gonna kind of jitter around and be a bit more irregular. I'm gonna put down a lot of that nice dark color here. The next brush we'll look at is Glow. And Glow is a really nice brush because it builds up gradually to white. So I can just keep painting in the same place and it'll get lighter and lighter. So I can create these really nice glowing effects using this brush. There are a couple of other image hose brushes that you can use. There's Shattered, which kind of breaks up the image. So these are some pretty fun brushes to check out. The next category is glazing. And glazing is a traditional painting technique where you're adding thin translucent or transparent layers of paint on top of other paint to kind of tint it or glaze it. If I open up this monochrome painting here, I can go to that glazing brush set. I can choose flat. I'm gonna choose kind of a skin color and then I can glaze over my face here to add skin color. Now I'm being really sloppy about this just for example's sake. I could select blue for the shirt, select a brownish color for the hair. Now I have the glazing property which controls the amount of glazing. So if I want the glaze to be thinner, I set it lower and it builds up a bit more gradually. So that brush has a flat edge, but we can also have particle brushes that glaze with particles. We could have a soft glazer that has a softer edge to it and we can get other types of effects here. You can also just draw with these brushes if you like, and they work really well to build up values because you can press harder to get a darker mark and lighter to get a lighter mark. Works a little bit different than the airbrush in terms of changing your opacity and building it up. It feels a lot like the brushes in Photoshop. Moving on to the next category, we have the particle brushes. Now particles have little particles that follow different properties. They can move around, they can clump together, they can spread out, they can do all kinds of different things. Some particles can be more controlled and stay together, and some just each go their own different directions. So for example, gravity chaos, as you might imagine, has some chaos. The particles kind of move around. I can move my pen, but they also kind of move independently a bit. If we try gravity bristle, this is going to be a bit more controlled. The particles do move around a bit, but for the most part, they stay pretty close to my brush. So I can get a nice bristly effect. This might work really well for drawing hair and stuff like that. There's different types of particle brushes. These particles can kind of move and twirl around. These kind of wave around. These ones form kind of a geometric pattern. These ones are in kind of a chain orientation. So you can get a lot of different results. This could be smoke, or you could fill your canvas with black. You could select kind of an orangey color and turn on glow 
When you do that, it makes the particles glow. So if I get the right color, kind of a dark orange like this, then I can get something that might look kind of like fire. Let's try flow fur. We can paint with that without glow on. It looks kind of opaque. But if we turn on glow, then it'll start to build up lighter and lighter and we get a nice glowing effect. Moving on to the next category, we have pattern pens. Pattern pens can draw with a pattern. So we'll choose pattern pen masked. We'll draw with that and we can draw with this pattern of hens and chicks. We can change that pattern to something else. Let's say lotus petals and we can draw with that. It's kind of similar to the image hose brush, but a little bit different. Here's piano keys and we can choose a different kind. We can get pattern pen soft edge. This is going to have a softer edge that kind of fades out. And then we have regular pattern pen and that does not have any transparency along the edge. So if I chose something like lotus petals, there's no transparency in the stroke. If I choose pattern pen mast, then you can see there is transparency. Moving on to the next category, we have pencils, pens, and markers. So we have various types of pens. We have pencils that we can use. There's an oily variable pencil. And one of my favorite brushes, the scratch board tool. This works really well for inking. Just gives you a nice opaque stroke that's very smooth. And the last category is sponges. Let's try regular sponge. This just gives you a nice spongy dab and you can dab with it to add texture or you can paint strokes with it if you like. We can change our paper grain to something else and we can control the amount of grain in that stroke as well. If we want there to be more grain, we can set it lower. If we want there to be less, we can set it higher. Let's take a look at smeary wet sponge. We can blend in another color here and we get a spongy brush that kind of smears a little bit as you paint. So that ought to give you a pretty good idea of what all the different types of brushes can do here in Corel Painter. If you want even more brushes, you can click on this plus button here and you can purchase brush packs and you have all of these different brush packs that you can add. There's just tons and tons of brushes here. For example, I'll click on info next to light it up essentials. That loads the brush pack and you can get a feel for what the brushes look like in that pack. And if you buy that brush pack, then you'll be able to install it into Corel Painter and you'll be able to select those brushes from within your brush selector. Now in the full version of Corel Painter, you can create your own custom brushes. You can't do that in Corel Painter Essentials, but you can change the properties of a brush. So for example, with this brush, if I wanted to set the grain really low, I can do that. And then if I go to a different brush and then I go back to that sponge, it's going to retain those properties. But because you can't save this brush, if something happened and you reset the brush or you reset Corel Painter, those properties will get reset as well. So now I wanna talk about choosing a brush. When I choose a brush, I just kind of look at the shape of the brush. So for example, the sponge brush, what does it look like when I paint with it? This could be a tree. So for example, I could select a dark green and then I select a lighter green and put some leaves on top of that tree. And all of a sudden I've got a tree brush. It doesn't need to be a sponge. This is a tree brush. But maybe this is also a stone texture brush where I'll have some stone textures like this. And so one brush can do a lot of different things. You just find the brushes that you like. And if it's easier for you, you can associate them with painting different types of objects. As I mentioned earlier, if I'm choosing an acrylic brush like Fine Camel and I make it really small and I decide that that works really well as a pencil or a pen, I can use an acrylic bristle brush as a pencil or a pen if that's what I wanna do. It doesn't have to be a bristle brush if I don't want it to be. So I could use this for drawing grass or I could use it for drawing tree branches or really whatever I want. And don't be afraid to mix media. I can take my digital watercolor and I can paint right on top of that sponge if I want to. I could put some chalk right on top of all that. And if I wanted to, I could go in with my blender and I could blend all of that stuff together. So there aren't very many limitations on what you can do here in Corel Painter to mix different types of media together. Fortunately, in Corel Painter Essentials, there aren't any special layer types that you have to worry about. So you really do have a lot of freedom as far as mixed media is concerned.